We've had a full summer transfer window of spending with incomings and outcomings galore. Now it's time to start season two and get stuck in to the championship once again. It's the Uruguayan curl to on in. What is up guys, Matthew here and welcome back to another episode of our FM24 career mode with the mighty Borough. It's Project Borough Season 2. Yes, we didn't think we'd be doing a Season 2, but you guys twisted my arm into giving the Championship one more shot after we lost the playoff final last season. And that, of course, brings me on to the playlist that is currently on the channel. If you guys are new to the series, we of course did do season one of this career mode during the beta where we got brought to the playoff final. So check out the playlist, all the episodes are on there for you to check out at your leisure. And in the last episode we did a transfer special where we had a number of incomings, a number of outgoings and we've still got business to do. We've still got plenty of money sat there ready to spend. We've still got transfers that are currently pending and uh, we're hoping that we can get one or two more through the door before the start of the season. But today, it's all about games. And we're going to play three games in today's episode because I do want to get two league games under my belt in this first episode. So we're going to play Watford away in the Sunday clash on the television. Then we've got Bradford in the cup, a bit like in real life, uh, in the league cup first round before we then host Blackburn Rovers in our first home game of the season so it'll give us a good chance to look at all the players that we've got in the squad currently we've got plenty of new signings that i'm excited to see so without any further ado let's get stuck straight in to the game against watford on the opening day or the opening weekend of the season so here's the team for the opening day then away at vicarage road Sandy Dieng will of course be in goal one of our star men from last season and someone we were obviously devastated to lose at points last season he's a crucial player for us then we've got our new right back in nathan ferguson makes his first start at right back scott mckenna comes in of course a signing we made in place of dale fry he will partner darrell lemahan in what looks like a very strong center defensive pairing if you ask me and then lucas engel of course is going to make the left back spot his own and will no longer be competing with um, Bangura, he'll be competing with Anderson Arroyo instead because we've pushed Bangura forward. Didn't realise we could do it, really. I never really thought about it, but he was so good at left-back last season. So creative. Maybe he was wasted, so we're pushing him further forward to the left-winging spot. And that brings Riley McGree back into a more central area. He's the more attacking midfielder of the three. Alongside Hayden Hackney, who of course retains his position as a deep-line playmaker, which is where he wanted to play in his new contract and then Lewis O'Brien who we've brought back to the club will sit as the ball winning midfielder we will have as Zaya Jones on the right hand side of course he has competition now with us bringing in Facundo Palestri and he's still I think the topic of lots of transfer speculation but I think he'll stay I'd like him to stay as I say Bangura up front and I am gonna keep Marcus Force in up front for now he's our top goal scorer from last season 27 goals I would like him to start but of course the competition in behind him is fierce because the bench we've got now I think is so much stronger than last season. Sol Brin of course is our new backup goalkeeper. As I mentioned, Anderson Royo, he can play right back, left back. Dyke Steele will come in as backup for right back and centre back. Vandenberg is cover for centre back. Rodgers of course we've got who can cover on the wings. Paddy McNair who will be a cover for midfield. Then we've got Facundo Palestri who is going to be absolutely amazing to bring off the bench or start on the right-hand side. Like the laugh, of course, he's someone we could play up front as well as Anthony Martial, who I still can't quite believe we've brought to the championship, but there we have it. So let's, without any further ado, get stuck in and hope we can get off to a winning start. I think at Vicarage Road, it's maybe one of the tougher places to go. Um, so you could say a point on the opening day would just be a steady start gets us off the mark the longer you go without a point you know the harder it potentially might get the pressure piles on your shoulders until you get that first point so you know in a sense a point would be good away at Watford but of course we should be if we want to get promotion this season looking 
at winning as many games as possible. And with Leicester, uh, not Leicester, Leeds and Norwich out of the league, I'm hoping the top two won't be as dominant this season as they were last season. With I think we've got Luton Forest, maybe Sheffield United who've come down. And I don't think they will bounce back up as strongly as Norwich went up last season. But anyway... Enough talking of Norwich and Leeds. They're out of the league now. Borough starting on fire. 20 seconds into the season. We're off the mark. Sheer magic from Borough. You could not ask for a better start than this. McGree to Lenahan. Bangura in there as well. Here he is. He plays it in. What a ball from Bangura in that more advanced role. McGree not playing as a winger. Playing more central. Sets up Marcus Force, who will continue from where he left off last season. The Golden Boot winner, of course. He gets us off the mark. What a start here at Vicarage Road within a minute. But Watford will come back at us. And here they are with Morris down the left-hand side. The glitch without the numbers on the back of the shirt is still happening, annoyingly. But a cross comes in and, well, Kalu with a shot. Big block there. I don't quite know who it was who blocked it. But I think they've just saved us from a goal going in. But Watford with the corner now. Lauser. With an outswinger, I think Force might have been the man who got a header on that, but Watford come again. Play it back to Andrews, that's the end of the highlight there. And we do hold off a brief Watford attack and spell. Give the boys a bit of encouragement. Some of them have not took too well to that. But, um, you know, they, they are doing well enough. We've got our noses in front, that's the most important thing. As we... Head towards the end of the first half. Doesn't look like there's much else happening. Seems to be more of an even game now than what it was. But uh, Backman looks like he's made a number of saves. We've suddenly had four shots on goal and four on target. So I think we are starting to take a little bit of control without there being any significant highlights. I say that. Well, I say here come Watford. Borough have won the ball back. McKenna to Engel. Here's Hackney's pockets being picked. McKinstry's got a free shot at goal and it hits the bar. Dieng was beaten. Hackney needs to be wary in the midfield, but we get to half time on the opening day, and it is Borough 1, Watford 0. Pretty much a level game after we scored. We didn't do anything and then had a, a little spurt. Watford come into it as the half went on. But uh, yeah, we're doing well, but we definitely have gears we can go into. 100%. I think if we go up a gear or two, we win the game. I think it's as simple as that. But we've got a highlight instantly here. Um, I don't think it's one of them extensive highlights where it shows kickoff. I think, like in the first half, we might be about to get a goal instantly, although Cali was completely well. There, there was something that happened where it showed us the full match. No extended. We've got extended highlights on. We normally only show key highlights. I've got key highlights. But, um, yeah, switched out to Isaiah Jones. And here's Lewis O'Brien. Can Borough strike early in the second half like they did the first? Lenahan out to Lucas Engel, now playing with Bangura instead of competing with him. Bangura, great ball into McGree. It's very similar to the first goal, this McGree, in that half space. Bangura plays it across, and I don't quite know what that was. In fact, it was blocked. It looked like Isaiah Jones has absolutely spanned that, but it did take a deflection. Hackney with the in-swinger, near post, an indirect free kick, oh no, it's to them, McKenna handballed it, I thought we had an indirect free kick for some reason there, never mind, but instantly at the other end, Kebe, he's got time, someone needs to stop him from potentially getting the shot in, he does play it back, here's Andrews, well pressed by Bangura, back to Wesley Hoyt, we've pressed them well and we've got them back to the goalkeeper, that's absolutely fantastic. From Borough there, but, well, they've got him behind instantly. Oh, Healy's gone round, Dieng. He looked offside. He is offside, I was going to say. One ball over the top, it looked way too easy. Borough's defence held their line. How tight was it? I don't think it was that tight. He looked offside. I don't know if we're going to see a replay, but he did look offside. Dieng didn't cover himself in glory there, but, um, yeah, he was offside. And I think on the hour, we're going to make a few changes. We are going to see what the new boys 
are all about. So Marcus Force had a good game, got himself on the score sheet. He's going to be replaced by Anthony Martial, who I still can't quite believe is playing for us in the championship. Jones out of the front three has probably been the weakest, so let's see what Facundo Palestri is all about on the right-hand side and if he can terrorise the life out of the Watford fullbacks. But we have got a highlight before the changes are made. Riley McGree whips the ball in. Oh, Jones, that's a crucial interception there, preventing a potential counter-attack. Here's Hayden Hackney taking matters into his own hands, crosses it in, and it is headed clear by Wesley Hoyt, who concedes a corner, and the new boys are on. No highlights from the corner, sadly, but let's see if the new boys can make an instant impact. I'd say our two-star signings, as it stands, Pelestri and Martial. Here's Hackney. McKenna back to Lenahan, playing very high up in possession, but Lenahan plays it back to Dieng, who then gives it back to Lenahan again as we're patiently trying to find our way. Oh my god. I, I didn't see Dieng in picture there. I thought Hackney had just played the ball to a Watford forward. But this is really good patient play from Borough, waiting for the moment to pounce. Here we are in the final third. Palestri beats his man. Can he whip across and he plays it back to Hackney? Palestri picking up a great pocket of space and he crosses it to Bangura. One winger to another. A wonderful goal from Borough. Well built up, well created. Patient play, not lobbing it forward. You know, trying to rush our way to goal. Hackney and Palestri playing really good football on the right. What a ball from Palestri. And our new boy gets himself an assist with a cross for Bangura, who of course is playing a lot higher up than what he's used to. And he gets himself a goal which is fantastic. So we are going to make a few more changes to try and go into a bit of game management, I would say. Let's have a look to see what we could do. Uh, Lucas Engel will bring him out for Anderson Arroyo. He can make his debut for the club and be a more defensive left back. Bangura looks a little bit tired, so I think we'll bring Morgan Rogers on for him. And I don't know if there's a way we can just shoo things up at the back. I'm going to be confident that the boys have got enough control at the moment. I think maybe we'll drop it back from positive to balance just to be wary of Watford coming back into this one. But I don't want to say that I've just, you know, famous last words and all that saying that we're comfortable. We'll see. Rogers though, intercepts well and then just sleeps on the ball. Lauser plays it in field. This would be a bad time. To concede, Lauser, he's allowed to run in the box, and I think Dieng's made a wonderful save, unless it went wide. Not sure if he did save it or not, but Watford with a brief attack there. But it doesn't look like it's going to be anything significant to worry about. Into stoppage time, Hackney loses it to Lauser again, though. And there is so much space in behind there, we're caught out. Fernandez Macau with the shot. Dieng tips it over the bar. That's not looking balanced, bro. That's looking a little bit too attacking for me at this stage in the game. Ince whips it in. It's headed up to Morris. I'd love him to get a clean sheet. That's a good tackle from Rogers there. Although Hoyt plays it in. Dieng's there. Claims the ball really well. Really nice. Slow it down, boys. Slow it down. Let's just try and have a little bit of control as we edge into the final few minutes and it's a wonderful start to the season Borough winning 2-0 away at Watford a clean sheet some really good debuts Palestri had a fantastic debut Bangura and Force played well Martial didn't look like he got into the game as much but that is a win and a good performance and a perfect start to the season of course it's way too early to start looking at the table but to get that first win is really really important and uh, yeah, we will move on now into the next game. Bangura and Palestri getting the plaudits there. We will give Bangura some extra praise for his performance in that more advanced role. But um, unless anything happens transfer-wise, we're going to jump straight into the midweek game. Give a few of the players a chance. And uh, yeah, we've got a home game in the cup against Bradford City. Well, some positive news. Of course, we've had loads of loan deals that we've tried to get through in midfield especially free transfers etc and the player has simply not wanted to come to Borough. Tommy Doyle wants to come to Borough, the deep lying playmaker slash Mazzala. He can play in a number of different midfield positions which I think is going to be a real 
plus for us. And we fended off Celtic, Southampton for his signature. And of course, he had a fantastic loan spell last season at Wolves. He was also very good in his brief spell at Sheffield United prior, obviously getting them promoted. He's a fantastic talent and he's someone I'm delighted to bring in to the team. And he gives us that little bit more in midfield. He can play in this defensive midfield spot or he can play a little bit further forward in the Mazala role, which he'd probably be competing with Riley McGree for that. But he can also compete with Lewis O'Brien in behind too. So yeah, he sort of covers two positions and it's a fantastic signing. It's one I wasn't sure was going to get over the line, but his potential is absolutely wonderful. And maybe, you know, if, if Borough were to, to get promoted this season, he could be the sort of player who we would look to keep permanently because, yeah, his potential is fantastic. And it follows the pattern that we've been asked of by the club, and that's to sign young players under the age of 23, and he's definitely going to be one of them. And it probably enables the transfer that we were going to make for Marcel Hartel. Well, we can leave it now because we're struggling to get his work permit decision. We're going to get it on the 8th. We'll see what happens, but if we don't get it on the 8th, we might have to withdraw the transfer. So, in fact, I think I'm going to withdraw it anyway. Um, and we'll leave that there. And what that does is it leaves us with plenty of wage budget. We're within the wage budget nicely. And we've also got a couple of million to spend. So if anything does crop up, we're in a position to capitalise and make some more additions. And obviously the more games we play, the more additions we might notice, the more gaps we might notice that need filling. So I think we've signed well and we're in a good position going forward. So here we are then, the team for the Carabao Cup first round game against Bradford. It is worth noting we did increase our season expectations to get into the next round. So it is key that we do get into the next round of the cup because we got a little bit of additional wage budget by basically saying to Steve Gibson, we're going to get into the second round of the Carabao Cup. So there's a bit of pressure on this game, but I feel confident that we can play a lot of fringe players and give them an opportunity. So Sol Brin is going to be in goal, our cup goalkeeper. He's been an outstanding young goalkeeper for numerous years and has had so many loan spells between the South, Swindon, Leighton Orient. But he is back in the squad now and he is going to be our backup goalkeeper. So hopefully he does well. Dyke Steele is going to come in at right back, Va uh, Rav Vandenberg is going to come in at centre back. Of course, we do want to start playing him more and get him to his full potential. I'm going to stick Dowell in a hand though, in there as well, an experienced head alongside him with Anderson Arroyo in for his full debut at left back. We've got Lewis O'Brien as the ball winner still with Hayden Hackney alongside him, but Tommy Doyle is coming straight in to the team as the Mazala alongside him. I'm intrigued to see how that works out. Palestri will start on the right with Bangura on the left. And Anthony Martial is going to be given a start. And I mean, you look at the look at that, look at the three and a half stars for all of pretty much the front four, and these are players who didn't even play in the first game. So I mean, I think it's safe to say the strength in depth that we've got is pretty darn good. Um, maybe still we need a bit more at centre back. Maybe still in midfield. Maybe we shouldn't have um, denied the, or withdrawn the offer for for Hartel, but. I don't know if we'd have got the permit through anywhere, and um, it was costing us 20k a pop to try and get it through, so yeah, we'll see how we get on, lots of new players in from the off, and you'd like to think we'd have enough to get by Bradford City, who I believe are still in League 2 at this point, not 100% sure, but it is the first time that we're out in front of our fans as well, so it'd be nice to give them... Something to look forward to and a win to then take into the league game right back here against Blackburn at the weekend. But here's Lewis playing it out from the back. Bradford, how comfortable are they doing so? They have hoofed it long now and well, Smith has took that down uncontested. Young is in. He's not onside. J Jake Young, no he's not. No, he didn't look onside in a month of Sundays. I thought he was off. But I was a little bit worried um, that Smith was allowed to take that down uncontested. I mean, the defence kept its line well. It's a good finish. And a warning from Bradford. But uh, we've got a free kick. And who's on it? I don't remember who's on the free kicks. It looks like it's going to be Tommy Doyle. Can he make himself an instant hero for Borough here? Tommy Doyle! And I think it's tipped over by the goalkeeper. Nearly a goal instantly on his full debut. 
for the Borough there. But it wasn't to be as we head into the nitty gritty of the first half here. 20 minutes in. Doesn't seem to be as um, as lively and, and as dominant as I would have hoped. I'm not going to lie. I think Bradford are doing really, really well at the moment to contain us. But we do have a highlight here on the half hour. Solbrin to play it out from the back. Here's Anthony Dykesteel on that right back spot into Hayden Hackney. Now here's Palestri. Let's see him cook on that right hand side. Here he is. Can he whip the ball in? Yes, he can. It's in towards Bangura. And it is the Palestri. Bangura combination. Who knew Bangura was as much of a goal scorer as this? He was our left back last season. The, the amount of untapped quality in Bangura that we just didn't know was there. But Palestri, what a ball. Bangura leaps like a salmon. I didn't know he was that good in the air. But it's a fantastic header at the back post. And Palestri gets himself another assist. Bangura gets himself another goal. Our wingers are absolutely clinical and that's what we wanted you know we had width on the right last season maybe not enough down the left and suddenly we stumbled across Bangura and uh, isn't it nice when you think you've got a new signing that was already at the club pretty much but uh, other than that it hasn't still been the greatest half from us I think a bit like the Watford game there's another gear for us to go into I think it's safe to say um, so yeah We'll see if the boys can get into that next gear. Haven't seen much from Martial yet, which is um, a bit disappointing. You know, he, he's, I know he's disappointed at, at, a, at a higher level, but I'd like to think at this level he, he would be uh, still more than competitive and a level above. But Bangur is in again here and it deflects off the crossbar. Great work between him and I think Arroyo on the, right, on the left hand side there. But yeah, with Martial, you know, you, you, you'd want him to, you'd expect that he would stand out head and shoulders at this level. Maybe he still will, but nothing so far. Corner comes in. O'Brien with a volley, and uh, that one clears the crossbar. We are starting to create a little bit of ch a few chances now without really doing much damage. I think we're going to make a few changes now to try and just turn things up. A little bit. So in the midfield, Hayden Hackney. We'll swap him out for Dan Barlasser, who's going to come in. I'm going to swap Tommy Doyle into an advanced playmaker. We'll, we'll put him in the McGree role and see what that does. Um, I want Martial to get his first goal. So I'm, I'm a bit reluctant to take him off at the moment. Um, we'll give him a little bit longer, but I think... Laugh will probably, well, I think he deserves some minutes. And it looks like nothing's going to come of the next period. Although we have got a free, uh, we've got a corner in swing and Tommy Doyle. It's headed up and it's saved. Or was it a miss? I think it was a save by the goalkeeper. Don't know whose head it was, who got on the end of it. But I, I would like us to get the second here because one nil's dangerous. Bradford could nick an equaliser from absolutely nowhere still. Bangura, it's headed out by Rogers. Barlasa, no, nothing. Oh, injured player. It's Martial. Oh, we were going to bring him off. Literally five minutes ago, we were going to bring him off. We didn't, and we should have. He has got a history of injuries. So that's something to be wary of, but that laugh will come on. Good thing about Martial, as I said in the in the summer transfer window special, we got him on a free and he's got a non-promotion release clause of 19 million. So if we don't go up, we get 19 million for him at least. So, you know, there's still that if things don't work out, but I think it was definitely worth the risk. We are paying him a hefty amount of money, but I think it's low risk, high reward if it does come off. So 87 minutes, McGree's on, Silvera's on. Is McGree on? Oh, I think we brought Silvera and Lath on. But uh, let's see if Lath can get himself on the score sheet here. Barlas out to Dykesteel. I would love a second goal here, Borough, just to sign and seal the victory here. Palestri into Tommy Doyle. Barlasa recovers the ball. Palestri, oh, he's lost it there. Pressing quite well here, Bradford. I am a little bit worried they might nick a goal here. 
you see it so often when you don't take your chances on the right hand side now it's an early cross it's floated up it's not out it's a bicycle kick and it's straight at Solbrin thankfully but that could have been something special but I think we might hopefully hang on we've got a free kick actually on the very edge of stoppage time at the very end of the game here Dyke Steel out of Palestri into Darrell Enahan Vandenberg Dyke Steel we'll have them to get back in the shape but that's okay with me as long as we don't lose the ball Lenahan turns into a winger oh no why why is Lenahan trying to play the ball there luckily they've absolutely screwed up the counter attack Barlasser with a great ball in behind to Emmanuel Laddie Lath and that's a wonderful finish by Lath but he's offside what a shame that was an unbelievable finish and a great ball from Barlasser but he's an he's about a thousand yards offside so sadly, Laff won't be getting himself on the score sheet, but we pick up another win. 1-0, job done as far as I'm concerned. And um, we move on in the next round of the cup, which is obviously something we promised the board we would do. And we have done, which is good. Um, only a tight growing for Marshall, so he's not going to be out for too long. But I would say, out of the three forwards, force... Laugh Martial at the moment. Sheffield United relied on penalties to get past Sutton United, which is quite hilarious. And we'll now move on to the third game of the episode, which of course is at home to Blackburn in the league. And if we do have the second round draw for the League Cup between now and then, we'll show you that as well. And just like that, we're here. Second round draw of the Carabao Cup. We did skip through a lot of this in the first round draw because we had that much going on in the transfer window but we will sit through this and see who we get I think all of the non-European Premier League sides come in at this stage but um, I think we, we dropped out quite early last season in the League Cup I think the FA Cup was the one where we had a really good run and I think got to the last 16 before we lost to Arsenal but like in real life I would like Borough to get a good run in the League Cup but it all depends on who we're drawing. Not many Premier League sides have come out at the moment. They've actually come out against one another. Wolves, Bournemouth, Birmingham, Brighton, of course. Birmingham, a Premier League side now. And they keep drawing each other, the Premier League type teams. They are. They're drawing each other continuously. Everton, Leeds, Palace, Villa, Burnley, Norwich. Fulham have Brentford. It is almost like Premier League and Premier League Championship, Championship. Teams seem to be drawing each other, but we're not at the hat yet. Akron and Stanley will play Forest, who have of course just been relegated. Peterborough have got Luton, another newly relegated side. Coventry, relegated to League One last season, play Millwall. Rotherham, wouldn't mind Rotherham. Ah, Carlisle, doesn't look like there's any champ uh, Premier League sides left. They've all been drawn out actually, so we should get a favourable draw. Sheffield United have Huddersfield, so the relegated sides are out. It looks like a League One, team, a League one side, we're at home. Burton, Burton Albion. We did play them in the cup not too long ago under Tony Pulis at home and we lost that one, so hoping that's not an omen. But we've got Burton Albion in the second round of the League Cup, currently sitting 21st in League One. We will take that. But um, moving on then, let's head to the Blackburn game, who were a team, of course, let's not forget who we beat in the playoff semi final last season, and we'll be looking to go one better like us this season. So this could be a very, very tricky game. So then, the team for the Blackburn game, it's relatively unchanged from the previous victory in the league. Sandy Dieng, of course, comes back in goal. Need to remember to drop him back to a sweeper keeper. We've got Ferguson back in at right back with McKenna and Lenahan back together at the centre of defence with Engel back at left back. Midfield three is the same with O'Brien behind Hackney and McGree. I have though started Palestri. We've obviously got the Palestri-Bangura combo going at the minute so we're going to keep that going with Palestri on the right, Bangura on the left and Force does come back in to start this one. Of course, Martial, he's still not 100% fit from his tight groin as well as not impressing too much so far. Lath will likely be the one who comes on for force if that change needs to be made. But here we go then. Can we make it two wins from two? Let's again 
make full use of our home advantage and it is going to be a tough one this because it's a repeat of the semi-final. It's weird that like real life this season Borough played Coventry in the second game of the season which was a repeat of the previous year's semi-final. It's the same here with Blackburn and they've won their opening two games. They won their opening league game and got through in the cup. So two from two for both sides. Who's going to be the one who, well, destroys the 100% start of the other? Or will we draw and destroy each other's 100% start? Who knows? But against Blackburn, we had some good luck at home last season. They often would win the home leg. We would win our home game against them, barring the playoffs, where we... Um, oh, no, we did. We did beat them in our home leg, and they beat us in the away leg, didn't they? But we outscored them at home. So, yeah. These, fi these fixtures often go to the home side, but I mean, they've started brilliantly and they've scored an absolute cracker and it's offside. Wow, we are getting so many offsides in this early season, but that looked like a tremendous move. Look at this, Smodix in behind Ferguson. He is offside, to be fair. McKenna and Lenahan once again, perfectly in line. But we've got to be wary because that was a wonderful move. Ferguson got caught in behind. And, uh, I mean, they've got a very good team. They've signed Jamal Lascelles. Travis, we, of course, were looking at quite closely in the window, but they wanted too much for him. And it looks like Blackburn have started the better here. They're torturing us down our right-hand side. I think Ferguson's having a bit of a nightmare at the moment. He's playing inverted. I wonder if we just play him as more of a natural wing-back. I don't know if that's going to make much of a difference, but we've been completely nullified in this first half. They've had six shots, two on target. Their XG is already above one. We've done absolutely nothing. Not a, not a shot to shout about in this first half. Blackburn have been utterly dominant. And they're going to probably finish the first half with a chance. Travis, once again, it's that left-hand side. It's into Smodix at the near post, and that one is not going to be disallowed. Niall Ennis does get the goal this time. It was another good move. Smodix with the shot that was saved, I think. And he was there for the rebound. Once again, though, it's that right-hand side. Ferguson is struggling. And it's been a poor half. It's been really bad. Really bad. Not good enough, boys, at all. Um, yeah, it's been really poor. Show me something in that second half, because that was not very good at all. What can we do to change it? I might bring Tommy Doyle on as a deep-lying playmaker. He can push up a bit. Um, and we'll see what else the boys do. But, yeah, Blackburn, look, the full package at the moment. Although we do have an instant highlight. McGree's in the box. Riley McGree beats his man, and it's saved by the goalkeeper. That was a chance. It was on his weaker foot, but that was a chance, a real chance. Doyle with the corner. Travis is there to meet it. Of course he is, and that's that. But it looks like we, we've, we have... Got a little bit of urgency at the Borough players here because here we go again, although that cross was cut out quite easily. Lenahan now into Hackney to Tommy Doyle. Is Engel on side? I think he is. Force is in! It's disallowed, surely. No? Yes. I thought it was. The 28th offside goal of the season. I don't know if it was Bangura who was offside or Engel, was it? Was Engel offside? Or was Force offside? I don't know. I mean, Force really should be onside there. He should just stay behind the ball. I think Engel was the one who was offside. But, um, yeah, a shame. But we look like we've started the second half a little bit more brightly than the first, where we did not turn up at all. But here come Blackburn instantly. They've gave the ball away. Force is in. Marcus Force equalises. We capitalise on a mistake. Was it Lewis Travis? Is he trying to suck up to us and say, you know, sign me, sign me? You know, I know Blackburn wanted too much money in the summer, but look, I've just assisted Marcus Force. Yeah, Lewis Travis. 
He wanted to come to Borough, really. It was the price tag. It was too high. We walked away, and he's just assisted Marcus Force in a crazy narrative right there. But of course, Force puts the ball away. He's um, still the striker he was last season. And hopefully, he's starting to find himself again. And um, because, of course, he was a little bit unhappy last season, wasn't he? We are going to make some changes, though. I'd say Palestri's not had the impact today that he's had in most games, but we've got Isaiah Jones to come on. Isn't that useful? Um, what else can we do? I think we could maybe freshen up in midfield. We'll swap Tommy Doyle for Hayden Hackney, stick McNair in as a more ball-winning midfielder, and Tommy Doyle can play alongside McGree. We won't have him as advanced. Let's have him as a support of Mazala. Let's see how that works. But is there going to be a winner? Oh, injury. Second injury in two games. Nathan Ferguson is off. Now, as I say, this is why I'm glad we've got the strength and depth that we do have now because we can bring on Anthony Dykesteel as a near enough straight swap. But uh, he's had a torrid game, Nathan Ferguson. He's been tortured on the right-hand side and has now gone off with a foot injury, which is a real shame. And instantly, Blackburn are on that very side. Dolan, though, is cutting back inside to Lascelles. Dominic Hyam here. Oh, Engel, that's wonderful. Cut out the pass brilliantly there. Lascelles, though, and it's going to come straight back at us, unfortunately. Engel there again, though. Two interceptions within moments of each other. And here's Alex Bangura. Back to Lenahan. Bangura to Lenahan. Here's McKenna. Here's some more of our wonderful, patient, possession, build-up play. Here is Palestri. I thought, I thought Isaiah Jones was coming on. Oh, another error. Oh, force. He's put it over the bar. Oh, how the hell has he missed that? I thought we were bringing Isaiah Jones on. How has that substitution not been made? I didn't see that. I was too busy thinking, but they've almost gifted us a second Force just puts it over. I tell you what, we've come back into this. And although I'd still say they've shaded it, it's there for us if we want it. Looks like they... Oh, they're pushing forward. Short corner. Well worked. Oh, Lewis Travis. It would have been scripted that he gets the winner. Oh, God. Blackburn are really pushing for the win here. I'd love us to catch them on the counter-attack. Go on, Engel. Doesn't quite get there ahead of Hyam. I'm hoping we can get back into our shape here, but they've switched it well to Pickering. Oh, Isaiah Jones, that's brilliant. Back to the end. Is this a Borough highlight? I would love a late winner. McKenna. Ooh, Jones. 1-2 with Doyle. Into McGree. Great football, this. I think we got a late winner at home last season. Marcus Force. He's onside. I, I don't know. Is he? No, he's not. Right, these offsides are ridiculous. How many offside goals are we getting in games? Oh, honestly, we've, we must have had about four or five offside goals already. It was a great finish. But it looks like, despite this back and forth, it's going to finish all square... And I'll take that because look at Blackburn's XG, 2.49, 18 shots, 10 on target. I mean, the highlights might tell you a different story, but I don't know if we had the right to win that game. We did have two disallowed goals, though, with Marcus Force, who could have had a hat-trick. So maybe, you know, we, we deserved something, a point, the win, I don't know. I'll just say I have to sympathise with you. It was one of them days... We created it enough. We had a few disallowed goals. It is what it is. And we share the spoils, which I think is a good result because Blackburn, I think, will be up there this season. And it sits us on four points after two games. Only Sunderland and Stoke have won both of their opening games with Sheffield United, Luton. Deary me, two, two relegated sides failing to win their opening two, along with Bristol City and Watford. So Nathan Ferguson is going to be out for a while. Twisted his ankle four to five weeks. 
he's going to be out for, which is a real shame. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where we are going to leave it. We will, I think, just keep on rolling because next time out we've got two interesting games. We've got Derby, who come up from League One as champions, and Leicester, who of course we had some fantastic games against last season. So we're going to stick with the same. Uh, we're going to stick with the same games. We're not going to skip ahead too far yet. And um, yeah, Derby and Leicester coming up in the next episode. If you've enjoyed that, guys, please do hit the like button and subscribe for much more football-related and FM content. We, of course, as well as this series, have a Road to Glory series alongside this one where we are currently starting our career at the very bottom in the National League North with Darlington. So if you are into the Road to Glory kind of career modes as well as these more luxurious, fun, enjoyable career modes closer to the top, of English football then do check that out as well I would much appreciate it but until next time guys do take care and I'll see you all in the next one